The weekend of March 17th of 2023 saw the release of Shazam! Fury of the Gods. However, the obituary could be written before the weekend was even over. Early weekend estimates indicated an opening weekend in the $30 million range, which is less than half of what Black Adam opened to six months earlier and Black Adam underperformed. The first Shazam opened to more than $50 million upon its release in 2019, but when you factor inflation and rising ticket prices into the equation, attendance-wise, the opening weekend audience has been cut in half since the first movie. With Marvel's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania flopping just a few weeks earlier, it is pertinent to ask the question, are these isolated failures, or is the whole comic book movie era coming to an end? We shall see, for in this post-mortem, I will begin by giving my spoiler-free impressions of the movie itself, before exploring the reasons why it failed, both those internal to DC and amidst the backdrop of a failing Marvel, and what this all could mean going forward. Shazam! Fury of the Gods continues the story several years after the first movie, with Billy Batson working to keep his family of superheroes together, all while trying, and failing, to make them a better team, more appreciated by their local community. Meanwhile, the Daughters of the Gods, from whom the entire Shazam! family's powers were taken, have been freed from their banishment, and they want the powers they see as their birthright back. Oh, and to destroy the Earth for shits and giggles while they're at it. That is the most basic setup for the movie I can provide, and it succeeds in both further exploring the Shazam mythology as well as Billy Batson as a character. The stakes are higher than in the previous movie, there are more fun and laughs throughout, and performance-wise, Helen Mirren, Jack Dylan Grazer, Jimon Honsu, and Zachary Levi stand out. Remember the post credit scene from the previous movie with Headless Superman? Well, kudos to director David Sundberg, who had tremendous fun with that in this one. In my personal opinion, Shazam! Fury of the Gods is a fun movie, and a vast improvement over the first one, which I admittedly did not care much for. My opinion is no doubt coloured by that. Still, with the exception of Spider-Man No Way Home, I found this to be better than anything Marvel produced over the course of all of Phase 4 and thus far in Phase 5. Since this is not a very high bar, that is not to say that Shazam 2 is a great movie, or even a great comic book movie. It is fairly middling when compared to the best the genre has to offer, but it is nonetheless a light-hearted and entertaining movie, void of the message, apart from one fairly innocent studio note. If this movie had opened around the time when the first Shazam opened, I can only imagine this would have been better received than the first, both in terms of reviews, attendance, and box office. But it didn't open then. It opened today, in March of 2023, and it ended up flopping, and probably worse than anyone in the studio imagined it ever could, even in their worst nightmares. Yet, here we are. And it's not that the audience came, saw the movie, didn't like it, and then spread bad word of mouth. No, a $30 million opening for a movie like this is tantamount to the audience rejecting it unseen, without even bothering to find out if it's good or bad first. Why would the audience do that? Well, I can think of a few reasons. The first and most obvious reason is that there was no audience demand to speak up for another Shazam in the first place. This is the explanation Deadline Hollywood latches onto. They refer to rival studio heads, who point out that the cinema score exit polls were similar between the first and second movie, but a higher percentile of the audience would recommend the sequel to their pairs than would the original. Couple that with the lackluster box office of even the original and what a silly character Shazam is argued to be, and the implication is that the studio perhaps would have been better off not making the sequel in the first place. Answering their own question of why they did so anyway, Deadline Hollywood points out that after most expenses have been subtracted, the first Shazam left a nice little profit of 75 million a profit that is likely to be eaten by the losses this one will be sure to incur. So that's one reason, a character like Shazam just isn't suited for the blockbuster treatment. They got away with it the first time, but in retrospect they should not have pushed their luck again. 
This is a valid explanation, but considering that exit polls show an as good or better response to this than the original, I don't think it's the only explanation. If we look over at the competition, you can argue that Disney and Marvel is in shambles right now, but that is a fairly recent development. By contrast, DC has been in shambles the whole time, which always prevented them from building the kind of worldwide brand and following that Marvel did. For all we know, this may change when James Gunn's more unified vision begins its rollout a few years hence, but in the short term. I think the promise of James Gunn's upcoming reboot made matters worse for this movie. The general audience may not be aware, but anyone with a higher than average interest in comic book movies and genre culture are very well aware that James Gunn is the new DC Supremo, and furthermore, they are of the understanding that Shazam 2, Aquaman 2, and The Flash are all dead ends going nowhere, as Gunn will be rebooting anyway. That understanding could very well be flawed. Shazam has links to James Gunn's Peacemaker, and Peacemaker will stick around for the future. But that is nonetheless potentially millions of people who could be spreading the message to their more averagely informed peers that these movies are creative dead ends, so don't waste your time and money. Combine that with the extremely mixed reception to earlier DC movies, and that could very well have had an adverse impact on the box office for this movie. But Shazam! Fury of the Gods didn't flop in isolation. It flopped right after Marvel's Quantumania flopped, and before that, both DC's Black Adam and Marvel's Black Panther Wakanda Forever also underperformed. Has comic book movie fatigue reached new levels? The saying goes that a rising tide floats all boats, and not too long ago that was true for comic book movies. For many years, the Marvel Cinematic Universe consistently delighted the audience, and while those Marvel movies did make the DC movies seem incompetent by comparison, the goodwill from those Marvel movies nonetheless kept the DC movies afloat, because the audience couldn't get enough of good comic book movies. But after Checks and Balances guy Ike Perlmutter was ousted from Marvel, and Victoria Alonso was elevated to Kevin Feige's level, while he was spread too thin between movies and misguided Disney Plus series, something happened. Marvel went woke, putting the storytelling in which their magic lied and upon which their mainstream success was built firmly in the back seat, while diversity, equity, and inclusion was put behind the wheel. Without the storytelling that used to delight the audience, while well, no longer delighting the audience, the audience started losing interest. As a result, not only are Marvel no longer propping up comic book movies in general like they used to do, between their lackluster movies on the big screen and overexposure on Disney+, Plus, they are, if anything, driving comic book movie fatigue. The most impacted by this are the more sketchy comic book movies like Shazam! Fury of the Gods. All of this is bad news for not just the rest of the upcoming DC movies that already were in production, but for James Gunn's upcoming reboot as well. The irony and the man of the hour here is James Gunn. While he is not the main reason that Shazam! Fury of the Gods bombed, without him taking over DC and announcing his upcoming reboot, the movie could very well have performed better than it did, as now there is a perception that Shazam! is a dead end, even if the movie does set up a path for Shazam! to carry on in Gunn's future DC universe if Gunn wants it. James Gunn's next movie, which is Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy 3, is the closest thing Marvel has to a safe bet until Deadpool 3, due out towards the end of 2024. Beyond that, Marvel has no more safe bets announced, it's all a coin toss from here on out. Since there will be no rising Marvel tide to help DC going forward, DC will have to help themselves. James Gunn will have to carry not just DC, but the entire comic book movie genre. Do you think he can do it? Or are you so over comic book movies you don't care anymore? And what did you think about Shazam? Would you like to see him return in the future? 
let me know in the comments.